What's up, family? Uh, today is a little bit different vlog. Some unfortunate incidents happened quite some time ago, but it's still kind of hard to talk about uh, with the scat pack. So we're going to jump into it today, kind of tell you what transpired. You can see by the thumbnail, uh, scary, scary situation, but uh, still here. Daughter's still here. Scat pack is here. Uh, so let's dialogue a little bit about it. Uh, some of those warning signs, what to expect if you own a vehicle like this, so forth and so on, man. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into today's walk. I can't take no loss, huh? I don't even know what it costs, huh? I hit the ground and it go off, yeah. Hit the ground and it go off, yeah. I can't take no loss, yeah. I don't even know what it costs, yeah. I hit the ground and it go off, yeah. Hit the ground and it go off, yeah, yeah. Run it, run it, yeah. I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah. Yeah, I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah. Yeah, I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah. Yeah, I really feel it's my time, think it's my I want to be clear on a few things is that uh, when I purchased this car, you know, you can go back and watch the vlog. It happened on my birthday, May 4th, 2022. Um, excited. Uh, I read reviews on the car. I knew it was an attention grabber. And even when driving the car, it is not. If I drive this car maybe four days out the week, it's not a day that's going to pass without somebody kind of pulling up to me revving the engine or somebody flagging me or somebody, you know, give me a thumbs up. So it grabs attention, you know. I'm a guy like cars. If you're like me, you like cars that, you know, get somewhat of attention. You know, people appreciate what you're driving, the amount of work you put into it, whether that's, you know, under the hood, whether that's just kind of cosmetic type stuff, stripes like the, the scat, but, you know, you like it. So, I mean, wasn't unfamiliar to that. Didn't, you know, wasn't, I didn't have false hopes that, you know, this would just be a car that would go under the radar, but I didn't know that it would get the amount of attention that it does. So, you know, if you're in the market for this vehicle, if you're thinking whether that's, hey, should I buy this for my, for my son, should I buy it for my Myself, should I get it from my wife? Whatever you're thinking, uh, that is something I would definitely be cautious of because it does grab a lot of attention. You're probably no stranger to the fact that, you know, uh, theft is pretty high on these vehicles. People uh, like to, or certain individuals or type of people like to steal this car, joyride, get the parts, whatever. So I'm always been cautious of where I take my vehicle, like where I park it at, the time of night, for instance, or or even when it's getting dark outside to make sure that, you know, it's parked, as you can see, it's garage, so it's not left outside. So it's pretty safe in that regards, but obviously it didn't keep certain events from happening. So uh, a kind of snowball of events led to this. Uh, for one, if you watch my channel and follow it, uh, you know that I have a 08 Range Rover that I purchased that I've had a lot of love and hate with, right? Uh, I actually do love the vehicle. It's pretty fun and I've put so much money into it now. It's kind of like, you know, might as well stick with it, but it's given me a lot of trouble. And for a period of time, it was out of commission for a while, for like, I, I want to say uh, a month and a half, close to two months. So going back almost two years when I purchased uh, the SCAT, it was never meant to be kind of like my daily driver. Uh, it does actually better on gas mileage than the Range Rover. SCAT gets about, if I get on eco mode and if I keep it there and kind of, you know, don't kind of drive normal, about 18.5, close to even 19 uh, miles per gallon in the Range Rover only get 15 to 16 and I commute a lot every day. So I'll just kind of, you know, put the math to that. So it, it never was meant to be my daily driver, but because, and I, I normally would kind of like pull out on weekends, have fun with it. You know, when I'm by myself, you know, I don't mind certain attention, you know, got pull up. And if it's somebody worth racing, now mind you, I'm not about to race like a Honda Civic that's just loud for no reason and goes nowhere. But if, a, you know, a decent car pulls up, I mean, I won't do anything crazy, but we may have a little fun for a short period of time. I don't mind it. It's to be kind of expected from this type of vehicle. But when I was forced to use it as a daily because the Range Rover was out, that means I'm doing a lot more commuting where I'm picking up my daughter from school, she's with me. And at those times, now, you know, you can't really see in the car, the tent is pretty dark, but at those times, you know, it's kind of annoying to have that amount of attention because, you know, I got my three-year-old daughter with me, so I'm not really on that type of vibe at all. I just want to get her home safe or get to whatever destination uh, we have safely with all that extra stuff. And, you know, it does, does get kind of annoying when you have small children and you're trying to tow them around in something like this. The amount of attention and all that, it can really just feel unsafe at times. So to the incident at hand, so we're in this period of time, Range Rover's out of commission. Uh, so I'm having to drive the scat pack every day. It was uh, even, I think it was about eight o'clock. So it was dark 
the sun was down already. And, you know, I live in an area where there's a few restaurants, not even less than 10 minutes from me. Uh, so my wife was out of town. So, you know, I ordered me and my daughter some, uh, some takeout. And uh, I think it was around, I mean, it was around eight. So, so we just kind of, you know, left here. And I'm just really going right up the street, got there, you know, got the takeout and was headed back home. And you have to kind of cross over, you know, it's like an overpass over a highway on way back to my, my house or kind of the neighborhoods and the back roads that lead to uh, lead to our community here. Doing that, and it's like a car in front of me, uh, like a gray Volkswagen four door. And I see the hand sticking out. So, you know, I'm kind of just driving on my way there on the right hand side. And the guy stick his hands out like trying to wave me and i'm like man it's <laughs> like i'm not even on that i'm just gonna, i'm not gonna stop got my daughter with me you know my assumption was they're trying to race me to try to see if we can kind of line up or trying to stop me to see if we can line up and and i'm like I, i'm not on that so you know i made a left like i normally do uh to kind of come to come to the neighborhoods or the back roads leading to the community and what i presume to be they kind of went straight so I'm thinking, you know, that's kind of the end of it. So make a left, make a, you know, it's a few turns to even kind of get to the community. You gotta go through a few neighborhoods, so I do that. But I'm also aware of if you go straight, uh, like that person or persons went, then you can kind of make a left and you can kind of come back and intersect kind of to that same point I was. So, you know, I'm just kind of driving, I'm getting really close to our community here. And I noticed somebody like come up real fast behind me. Now, when I'm driving in general, I always got my head on a swivel. Like my wife would tell you, I always be like, man, that's a deer over there. Or since she's like, how did you see that? Just, I'm always looking, trying to be as safe as possible. So, you know, I see this car like coming up on me pretty fast and I'm like, yo, like, you know, get off my tail, you know what I mean? So I do the thing where I kind of like, just kind of slow down and I'm trying to see, you know, what's what. And uh, that came up real close and then they kind of just like bagged up. And I'm like, it's like something ain't right. And you know, you get that feeling, right? When you just kind of get that ear, your spotty senses start going off. I mean, like, man, something ain't right with this, man. So, you know, I made a right hand turn, like normal, going to neighborhood and uh, they kind of held back a little bit. So I made the right, I'm going up. And I'm like, I'm gonna see if they kind of turn with me and see if it's like a natural turn of this is the normal way they were going or if this somebody trying to follow me. And when I was going up and I looked back, I'm like, man, I swear that's like the same car. And I was like, that's that silver Volkswagen that just tried to. So at that point, I'm like, yeah, this ain't this ain't normal. So I make the right, they're a little bit behind me and they make that right too. And then they held back, but then they sped up. And I'm like, okay, it's on some now. So, you know, it, it's, I started to get a little nervous. And again, it's not that I'm like, oh my God, what are they gonna do? I mean, I got my daughter in the car, right? If it's one thing, I mean, as a father, three-year-old, especially my precious little baby man I don't play with my daughter by all means I am not some gangster guy out here that's popping up but I, I will not and I will defend the safety of my family and my daughter by any means necessary and I do not play so it was just a scary situation because I got this precious cargo in my car and I'm just trying to get my daughter home safe. So, you know, I keep going, they turn behind me real fast. So I'm like, okay, instead of like, I was like, it's not the smart thing. So I start trying to kind of, you know, recalibrate real quick. And I'm like, I'm not gonna go to my house. That's not smart. So, cause they, if they own something, you know, they're gonna see me pulling up. It's gonna be also, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go the back way. So I made a right. And again, I was like, if I make this right and they stay behind me, they're definitely on something um and I automatically uh, and i will say i am a i do believe in, in carrying conceal and having like if you if you're trained you know how to use it you're not some young person out here on some stupid stuff or you don't mean harm for anybody but to have something to be able to protect yourself and thankfully that night i did have what I needed to be able to, so I'm driving, but I just didn't have it in, in arm's reach because I don't keep it because of my daughter. So I keep it kind of tucked away. Therefore, if I, it's safe from her, I've just too many instances of having, I've heard of a kids getting a hold to, to, to firearms. But the bad thing is the way I have it, it may take me a little while to kind of get to it if I'm in a situation where I need to access it quick. The fact that I'm even having to kind of go through this in my head was scary because I've never been in a situation before where I've had to actually consider and any time you consider pulling out a firearm, that means it's extremely serious because that means, you know, you should only pull that out if there's an intent and you plan to have to use it, right? So make that right. And I'm like, you know, if they make it with me, I know they own some other type of stuff and we're gonna have to, you know, so unfortunately they bagged up a little bit 
they made that right along with me. So I was like, at this point, I was like, I need to kind of, cause again, these are back roads. You gotta go back roads to get to my house. And I was like, I need to get kind of in the neighborhood where there's some houses. So if something does happen, there's people around, I can make noise, somebody can come out, whatever. So I, I made a left into a neighborhood and I kind of stopped just kind of parked right in front of a house. It's like along my walking trail. So I'm kind of very familiar with kind of the back ends of it. Um, and so I stopped there and I was like, I'm gonna see. And the car kind of pulled behind me, moved to like the side and they stopped as well. Uh, so I rolled down my window. Now in hindsight, the next part wasn't smart of what I did. But I was just so kind of like angry. So I got out of my car and, you know, I'm like, you know, start yelling like what? I mean, like, you know, what you want? So I saw that the passenger side window, because they pulled to my left, was a little bit cracked. So I seen that it was two people. Windows were dark, so I don't know if it was more people in the car. So they stopped and then they kind of just kept going. So at that time, when I saw that they were ahead of me and kind of went away, this is my time to go grab my firearm. So I rushed to my trunk really quick uh, and got that. And then I immediately called my wife. Not that she can do anything, but I was like, at least I want somebody to be on the phone. And at this time, my daughter's like yelling because I had to take the phone from her to call my wife. And it's just chaotic. Uh, and she's crying, she on the phone back. And I'm trying to get my wife on the phone, describing the car to her. And I'm like, stay on, because if something happens, at least I know somebody, you can call police and say, they're, they're, you know what I mean? So, and again, you may be listening to this, be like, how come he can do he didn't do this, but in the heat of the moment, like when everything's going on, you know, I, I'm trying to take these strategic steps to stay calm and make sure. So uh, I grabbed what I needed from my trunk, you know, placed that close to me. And I was like, you know what? They still may be in the neighborhood. I'm not going to go right home, right? I was like, let me go kind of in this other neighborhood, again, along my walking trail that I'm familiar with and let me kind of just dip over here. So I made a U-turn, went to a neighborhood not far from where I live and kind of circled through there. And as I'm kind of, so I look in my rear view and I see that car coming, they must've looked and saw me. They stopped as well. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, man, at this point, I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen next, but I need to kind of get their license plate or something. So again, you may be listening to this and kind of judging, you may say in the comments, man, how come you didn't? But again, I'm just trying to stay smart, keep this action away from my home, right? So it's not like a thing where uh, I know where he lives now, we can try to come back. I'm just trying to keep it away. So I immediately, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get this information. At this point, I'm just like really frustrated. Cause I'm like, I'm not gonna play this cat and mouse game uh, with you. If anything, I'm about to be the cat. You know what I mean? So I, I made a U-turn uh, at that point and they waited. But when they saw that I was coming, you know, they dirted off. So at that point, I was like, I'm gonna see how close I can get behind them so I can at least get a license plate uh, because I got people involved and see if, you know, they can help me out running or whatever so I can identify like, man, like what's going on here. So when they saw me behind them, when I made the left, got a little, cl not close enough, they immediately, like at an unsafe hot pace, start kind of, and these are back roads and right now we're in neighborhoods, hot pace like they start gunning it. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to, again, my daughter's in the car, but I just want to make sure that it's going to be safe for me to go home. Uh, and they make another right down a long way, actually, to my left right here. And they gunned it again. And I follow behind them, not at a safe, but at a, at a distance, because I'm not about to go 70 miles an hour or 80 on the back row here until I was comfortable that they were going. Uh, and then I quickly kind of wheeled back around and kind of came to my house, kind of parked in the garage and just kind of like on high alert. Honestly, I was going to the door every looking out to see if they were kind of circling the neighborhood, see if they can find me, man. But never what I thought I would be in that type of predicament. Again, I didn't plan on this being my daily driver, but I never thought I would do or be in that situation where I felt like my daughter's life was literally threatened. Uh, so. You know, I mean, that's that's been and I haven't had that experience again. Uh, you know, it's funny, just like uh, the other day, like two days ago, three days ago, I had to pick my wife up from the airport. And I was like, you know, you could take the car with you. And I was like, I'm be interested to see if anybody tries to race you or so you get, you know, because she doesn't drive it that much like by herself. And there's reasons for that. <laughs> but uh, she does it. But, you know, she was like, yeah, when I saw her, like it's an old pickup truck. 
tried to pull beside me and kept trying to egg me on to kind of like, you know, race. It's like, this is crazy. And it's like, you get that type of attention. But again, if it's just me on a weekend cruising and I'm just having like, you know, it doesn't bother me. But as a, when you just like on a day where you got like a little one in there, and it's just like, if you got to drive it every day and deal with that type of attention, it can get pretty annoying. So I was on a kick for a while after that happened. I was scared, I was acting out of fear. And I, I was just like, I'm getting rid of it, I'm done. I actually went to a GM dealer in Missouri, uh, looked at the newer Escalades and if they would have had the the, the one that I wanted, kind of like the black label, uh, like the front, you know, was blacked out in the grill and all of that, then, you know, at the right price, this would have been gone because I, I, I was just, you know, no more. But thankfully, I was able to, the Range Rover decided to miraculously start working right. I say that, but it's in the shop right now. Uh, but just new brakes, all of that, nothing crazy. But I've been able to drive that. And this has honestly been parked for over a month. I just pulled it out because the Range Rover's in the shop. And, uh, you know, we had some really bad weather here in Kansas City, like snow, like below freezing temps, like negative, whatever, it's been crazy. Uh, you all probably know Chiefs game and all of that that we played in the playoffs was a crazy temp and with champs, by the way. So, you know, repeat, shout out to the Chiefs, any Chiefs hater go to somebody else's vlog. No, I'm kidding. You know, uh, so I've been able to kind of park it uh, and it's really not a problem when I just kind of pull it out every now and then. So, you know, more of the story is my daughter's safe. I thank God for that. Um, and again, this is not, and hopefully you kind of can hear my heart with this. It's not, you know, I don't fire arms. I was about to, this ain't even that type of vibe. I'm not even that type of person, but it was really scary. And I was just kind of shaken by the fact that I didn't tell a lot of people this story, close people to me, uh, parents, my brothers, close friends. It was kind of scary that I would have to go to that extent and I felt necessary, felt that fear for my daughter and our safety that I would have to go to that extent of trying to kind of get my firearm. So it's things to be mindful of this type of, this is not a Hellcat by any means, but a scat, a scat pack still carries a, a certain amount of attention. And it seems like it just kind of attracts the wrong type of attention. Now we'll get a thumbs up from an old guy or even a lady driving. And that's cool like for people to be like, man, nice car uh, at the gas station, people commenting on it. But to, you have that other audience or the other crowd that wants to race, wants to, wants to do silly stuff, wants to kind of try to get you to do burnouts and all this other, you know, kind of um, what I call it stigma, I should say, uh, that comes with having this vehicle. So, you know, if you're in the, if you have one, I'm sure you can relate. Hopefully you haven't had anything scary to happen. I'm sure, you know, you, you, you may have, uh, you may even be watching it had your stolen or stripped for parts and things. It's just crazy, man, but be safe. I mean, be safe in this vehicle. Uh, keep your head on a swivel at night. I wouldn't, like, if you're in an unfamiliar area and you're gonna leave it parked outside, I wouldn't encourage that. Honestly, for a younger person, uh, sorry if your parents are watching this, but I wouldn't encourage a younger person to have this either. But, you know, you just have to be mindful uh, that it's a shame that, you know, just to have a fun vehicle that you spend your hard on money just to drive and enjoy, uh, that you have people out there that are really just looking to, to cause damage or, you know, kind of take your own property uh, from you. So just be cautious, be safe, man. And uh, I wish you the, like, the, the, the best of safety if you're driving this. I, I did decide to kind of keep it you now because I, I really do like the vehicle. Um, and again, if, it, if I'm in a position where it needs to become my daily, I'll probably do something different. So and until next time, man, more updates coming on the Scat Pack. Uh, I'm gonna hit y'all with a video, make sure you kind of keep up with the playlist on the uh, Chrysler, which is right next to us. So man, man, be safe out there. My Scat Pack owners, be safe. Again, your boy's back. I appreciate you. If it's your first time watching, man, go back to the videos, kind of catch up with my journey. Took a little time off, but uh, I'm back. So let's get to it, get to the content. Love you all, miss you all. Happy to be back. Be safe, man. Trust God with everything. Uh, doubt him for nothing. I develop a relationship with him uh, every day. Some days will be rougher than others, but days will kind of get better. Uh, they will uh, just kind of stick with God, whatever you're going through. Uh, my prayers are with you. I love you. Uh, just know I got you. You got me. Let's do this together. Next time. Peace. Can't take no loss. Yeah. I don't even know what it costs. Huh. I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah. Hit the ground and it go off. Yeah. I can't take no loss. Yeah. I don't even know what it costs. Yeah. I hit the ground and it go off. Yeah. Hit the ground and it go off. Yeah. Yeah. Run it. Run it. Oh, I really feel it's my time. Think it's my year. Yeah. Yeah. I really feel it's my time. Think it's my year.